Today I'll be reviewing Love Walked In by Marissa De Los Santos, an adult novel published in 2005 about great cinema, great literature, and the many, many different types of love. Before I began reading Love Walked In, I thought it was going to be another cheesy romance book about a girl in a cafe who catches the eye of some handsome stranger, and they date, and she realizes a secret about him, and then they break up, and then she realizes the error of her ways, and they get married. You know the type. This is not that. I want you to imagine if Maureen Johnson and Amy Sherman Palladino had to team up to rewrite A Little Princess in Modern Times using a dual perspective. That is the only way I can sum up the tone of this book. There's so many twists and turns that I don't really know how to deliver a decent plot summary without giving things away. I mean, it's not a freaking crime drama, but the experience of reading the book for the first time, not knowing what depth and emotion it held, was such an intense experience that I don't want to ruin it for anyone else. So I'm going to read you the first paragraph of the book so you can kind of get the gist of the setup and the amazing tone that Santos creates for the main character, Cornelia Brown. My life, my real life, started when a man walked in, a handsome stranger in a perfectly cut suit, and yes, I know how that sounds. My friend Linny would snort and convey the kind of multi-pronged disgust I rely on her to convey. One prong of feminists discuss that the whole idea of a man changing a woman's life, even though, as things turned out, the man himself was more of the harbinger of change than the change itself. Another prong of disgust for the inaccuracy of saying my life began after 31 years of living it. And the final prong being a kind of general disgust for the way people turn moments in their lives into movie moments. That is a perfect first paragraph, if you ask me. So Martin Grace walks into Cornelia Brown's cafe that she manages, and he instantly reminds her of Cary Grant, and she falls in lust immediately. Note that I didn't say love. This is not about that kind of love. Well, not really. Martin brings Claire, a little girl abandoned by her mentally ill mother, into Cornelia's life and changes her life forever. Huge events happen, throwing them all into turmoil, and then road trips happen that show Claire and Cornelia the meaning of family and what it means to belong, and it's so bittersweet and pulls at your heartstrings that I am just not describing it well enough. One of my favorite things that authors can do is to allude to timeless elements of pop culture. One of the worst things an author can do is to mention something such as Family Guy or Call Me Maybe, but we'll talk about that another day. In this novel, Cornelia has an obsession with Cary Grant and Katherine Hepburn and all those other timeless, classic movies and actors. Claire, on the other hand, uses classical children's literature to cope with her mother's illness. She relates to characters such as Sarah Crew from A Little Princess or Mary Lennox from The Secret Garden. As the women begin to bond, they offer up their choice of escapism to each other, which causes the two worlds to merge. For an entertainment buff like me, that is one of the things that makes this book so great. And let's not forget that this book has some wonderfully written swoon-worthy lines, such as, I spoke, I listened, and my heart broke, which is to say that it didn't break at all but became suddenly aware of its own wholeness in such a way that it hurt like hell. And then there's that word, anguish. The anguish of her young mind. Doesn't that word sound like what it is? Doesn't it sound like the worst thing you could feel? She thought about the word capture, how it put a writer on par with a fur trapper or a big game hunter, and how it implied that stories were whole, and roaming around loose in the world in a writer's job was to catch them. Now, of course there were a few faults, such as there's two love interests for Cornelia. Not, not a love triangle, thank goodness, not a love triangle. And while one is handled very, very well, the ultimate romantic conclusion is a little dissatisfying. The guy she ends up with is awesome, and she's super awesome, but how they end up together is a little less than awesome. However, there is a sequel, so I'm looking forward to reading more about the relationship and seeing how the final conflict is resolved. 
Overall, a surprisingly amazing read. A solid 5 out of 5 stars. I would definitely recommend this to everyone, but especially YA fans looking to get into a new genre. That is all I have for you guys today, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!